I'm gonna be answering some of your questions that you wrote to me on Twitter. Hey guys, hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Today we're gonna be eating pork belly wraps. This here, it's almost like posam. You know, posam is a Korean dish where the pork is boiled and mm, when it's done right, it's so smooth and oh, the meat is just oh, heaven times two, maybe even times three. But this one, I actually picked it up at Trader Joe's. It was already fully cooked and I just um, cooked the sides until it was like a brown gold well, part of the brown gold skin um, peeled off, so now it looks like a skin tone. We're going to be eating this pork belly, sam style. What is sam? In Korea, sam, we take leaves, such as um, lettuce or like genyi, sesame leaf, and we put the meat in there as well as other ingredients. And one of the main ingredients to use is samjang. Not opening easily. Uh, uh. Wait, did I get the right one? <gasps> Don't tell me! Oh no, I think I got the right one. What is samjang, you ask? Samjang is made of bean paste, and this particular one has sesame and garlic in it. I'll give you a close look at it. So when you go to a Korean restaurant, and you're eating posam or like uh, grilled meats, right? Um, a lot of times, they'll bring out appetizers. Raw carrot, as well as raw cucumber, and it comes with this dip, the samjang. And you just dip it like this, and voila! Pop it in your mouth. Ooh, that one is, um... It starts off very sweet, and then it ends... Whoa, very spicy. Actually, this is my first time trying this brand out. Whoa, my ears are... I'm feeling the spiciness in my ears right now. When you eat busam, the boiled pork, you typically pair it with one of these guys, cabbage leaves. I'll do the demo for you right now. And then let's take one of these porks, and then... We take some of the uh, radish kimchi, top it off. This is a semi-safe place to put my chopsticks. And then let's fold it. Actually, I'm gonna rotate this a bit and fold it around as such. Either I'm really hungry or that's really good. The inside of the pork is so soft. You know what I like about some is you're not just eating the meat, you're balancing it out with some uh, fresh veggies. So uh, you don't feel like super icky after you eat it unless you overeat but typically if you overeat anything you could feel icky and if you want more flavor we add some samjang, but personally, when I eat sam at restaurants, I don't usually use the samjang. I just like to enjoy the meat with the leaf as is by itself. Sometimes people put rice inside their sam as well. However, with the veggies, I like to dip lightly. Another common sighting when you go to Korean barbecue restaurants
What do you do with this? Same thing. You dip it. And then eat it. Yeah, I'll do a demo for you. Crunchtastic. Oh, spice. Woo. And over here we have some side dishes. You know when you go to Korean restaurants, they give you panchan, side dishes. Here we have black beans. You know, when I was growing up, the adults used to tell me, if you eat a lot of black beans, it'll make your white hair get black again. You know, it's like some people say if you eat pig skin, then you're going to get nice skin, like collagen is going to get into your face. Uh, I don't believe that if you eat a foot, you're going to grow a foot. If you eat a watermelon, you're not going to look like a watermelon. And here we have seasoned anchovies. This is a side dish my mom used to make often when I was young. And you know, we also have uh, walnut. Yes, and then little, little fishies. I also see some sesame seeds in that. Oh, my chopsticks fell down. Let me clean it up real quick. Gotta be careful or else my floor is gonna taste like kimchi soon. Over here, we have lotus. Lotus in Korean is yonggun. Ah, lotus is so beautiful. When you slice them, you get these like flowery um, shapes. And here we have raw garlic. When you eat some, you could put raw garlic in there. It'll make things uh, spicier and more like, you know, spiky. Sometimes at Korean restaurants, they would either give you the garlic in whole cloves or they will slice it. I just chopped it, you know, roughly. And then here we have, I think there's more kimchi? No. Hmm, that tastes like squid. It doesn't have a crunch. It's a little bit more chewy and it's spicy. Spicier than the samjang. Let's try the pork belly with one of the lettuce leaves. Ooh, that's a thick piece. I'm gonna leave that piece for the last bite. Are you the kind of person who eats the most delicious food first in the beginning of your meal or at the end? Or maybe in the middle? Now, I was told that people who grew up in bigger families, like who had brothers and sisters, they eat the delicious things first or else it's gonna be gone their brother or sister is going to take it. But I grew up as an only child, so I don't feel that competition. I like to save my favorite bites, the most delicious bites for the last. However, if it's time sensitive, then it's a different story. All right, so typically, uh, Koreans use white rice for their sum. I made quinoa instead. It's a matter of preference. Just a little spoonful. We don't want too much on there. Let's put some of this baby on there. The kimchi, radish kimchi. You know what? Let's put some um, black beans in there. Actually, some people will say, why are you putting black beans in your sum? That's wrong. It's not like super common to do that. However, there's a lot of customization. Um, you could really put anything inside here that you want it's because it's going in your mouth, right? It's not going in someone else's mouth. It's going in your mouth. So the rules of your mouth is going to differ a bit from other people's mouth. Besides, I like to break the rules a little bit. If you do the same thing all the time, you're not learning anything. You got to change things up. Try things. All right. Mm. 
Mmm. It's good. The black bean. That one I bought at a Korean market called H Mart. The black bean is on the firm side. Mmm. Let's try the lotus root. There's a bit of saltiness and sweetness. Definitely eat rice or quinoa with that. Sometimes a leaf, if it's too thin, like lettuce, it might break apart. So what you could do is double wrap it. You take another leaf and put it right on there. That way, you'll get even more fiber intake. I'm going to be answering some of your questions that you wrote to me on Twitter. I read a comment on one of my videos. Someone was saying that I look like a weird hamster when I eat. Is that supposed to be a negative thing? Is that is that is that supposed to offend me? The fact that you think I look like a hamster? Thank you. I like hamsters, but I prefer to be called a bunny. And for those of you who are new around here, you've been asking me. How old are you, Miss Mina? I'm the ear of the rabbit. I'm born in 1987. And then you're gonna ask me, what's your birthday? I'm just gonna say I'm a Sagittarius. Mmm. This time, let's um use skin yip. Sesame leaf. I already got some stuff on there. Let me show you a brand new leaf. If you turn it upside down. It looks almost like a heart, except it doesn't have that dip. Oh. You know, nature is really awesome. All those veins, it's beautiful. Let's double leaf this one. Let's put two genips on each other. They're also called perilla leaves, by the way. Okay, let's put some porcabelle on there. Actually, right now my whole house smells like this food. It smells like pork belly and kimchi. Typically, after I film a mukbang, because the whole house will smell like food, I will use sage. I will burn sage, let it get smoky of sageness, and then open all the windows and let the air out, and then it'll be fresh again. Okay, let's put some uh, kimchi. This time, I'm going to put a little bit more kimchi. Let's put some raw garlic. Ooh, let's try some anchovies. Okay, the walnut, I just want to have it as is, by itself. What's this green thing? Is that edamame? Okay. That one, if you have cavity, it's going to hurt to chew on it. Because I grew up eating that one, I just like it. There's no particular reason why I like it. I just like it. It's like some people that you have in your life, like family, you just like them because you like them. Because they've been in your life. Let me rotate the meat so I could fold it easier. This is what it looks like close up. I was craving some for a while, so I'm really happy that I'm filming this mukbang today. If you look closely at the stems, they're quite furry. Do you see? Do you see the furriness? It's like, um, reminds me of peach fuzz. A 
Lately, the weather in San Jose has been PMSing, at least in my area. It was hot during the daytime, and then suddenly at nighttime, it was howling. The wind was howling at night. And that gave me so much feels. Do you get feels when it is windy and rainy? I actually don't like sunny weather too much, and I like the beach when it's foggy, when it's cold, and you're all like bundled up and walking barefoot. I don't know when that particular scene became romantic to me. Whoa, something tasted cheesy for a moment. Wait, what was that? There is a hint of saltiness. Alright. I think this is going to end up being my dinner as well. As I film this, it is Friday night. Usually I stay at home on Friday nights. I don't really go out. You know me. I don't really party as much as I used to. But tonight, I'm thinking about uh, checking out a jazz um, club. I've never been there before. Um, I looked it up recently. And it's located in downtown San Jose. And if I end up going, I'll insert it in three, two, one. All right, let's have some quinoa. Right, I'm gonna start answering your questions. Um, what is the weirdest food you ever tried and where was it from? For me, it's hard to answer that because a lot of things that people consider weird, I don't consider weird and vice versa. Usually people think bugs are weird. So I have eaten silkworm pupae. I've also probably eaten cockroach legs. You know, when you eat street food in Southeast Asia and different parts of the world, you don't really know what's in your food. You don't really know if the person who made your food actually washed their hands after pooping. And you just hope that you don't get sick and you hope that your food is clean. So even if it's not street food, even if it's just a normal restaurant, you never know if the chef washed their hand properly or if the waitress washed their hand properly when they're touching your dishes. You can't stay at home all the time. You gotta go out. Take some risks. Whew, that bite had a big garlic. Next question. Have you ever been to an American restaurant in Korea? Really, no food is 100% American, lol. But if so, how was it different? Did I eat American food? I can't recall. Usually when I go to Korea, I eat Korean food. Um, you know, some people, when they go to another country, they're looking for their country's food because they miss it so much. But I'm the type of person, I don't miss my home country's food. Because when I'm in Thailand, I want to eat Thai food. If I'm in Indonesia, I want to eat Indonesian food. And when I go to Korea, I typically go there to film. People think I'm having so much fun, just partying or... How did a fly get in here? What? No. Hold on. Be right back. Okay, I shooed the fly out of my room and I closed the door. You know, I rarely get flies in my place. I think it was like the first time in a couple years I had a fly. I didn't even have any of my windows open. That means there's a hole somewhere the fly got through. You know, this question reminds me of the time I went to Europe with a bunch of other travelers around the college age. But one of the girls I travel with, every country you went to, she didn't care about the local food. She just wanted to eat McDonald's. And because of her, a couple times I ate McDonald's. And I was like, kind of sad about that. But then I learned some interesting things. In different countries, McDonald's looks different. The McDonald's I've seen in Europe, they're like five times, ten times more fancier than the McDonald's in the U.S. I haven't been to all the McDonald's in the States, so maybe there are some fancy ones here that I just had never seen. 
Are you back in San Jose? Fanime this weekend! Yeah, I've been in San Jose for... I've been in San Jose since February, mid-February, which means I've been here for three, three, four months already. Wow, time flies. Time just won't stop flying. But actually, next month, I'm gonna go back to Korea. I don't like to release my exact dates when I'm going somewhere. I just feel that that's like a privacy, like a security thing for me. But I will be in Korea next month for about two months, less than two months. Um, I'm running out of footage for my Sweet and Tasty TV channel. So I got to restock, reload on my pixels, and then I'll come back to San Jose. I know I'm eating this by myself. I turn the carrot around after I bite into it so I don't do second dip but I feel like at some point I do did or I did do second dipping how can I manage to gather enough money to go from Europe to Korea I'm a high school student by the way please answer me echoing hearts this is a question for anyone who's interested in traveling multiple countries you know some people think I'm so rich that I'm able to afford traveling for six months. Wow, how untrue that is. I was on a budget. And actually before I went on my six month Asia trip, I stopped partying. If I did go party, it was like more like a local place that doesn't cost you a leg to get into. I also started to eat more at home and eating out less. And if I eat more at home, I would buy, you know, when I go grocery shopping, I will buy things that are more affordable but still nutritious and healthy, right? Because I was on a budget and trying to save up for my Asia trip, I was hanging out less with my friends as well. And what happened was, because I was, you know, making my life more minimal, I started to hang out with people less and I became a little bit more particular with who I hang out with. So I would hang out more with uh, the closest friends. I think of uh, all my relationships like a pyramid. You know, there's like a friendship pyramid. There's like the top tier, which is like your immediate family, like your mom, and then maybe best friends, right? And then you go down, there's a second tier, and then go down third tier, and then go down, 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 and then acquaintances, and blah, 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 blah. So when you have that set, then you know how to spend your time more wisely. In my earlier years, I used to hang out with anyone anytime. Like all over, like whatever rank on the pyramid level they are, I just hung out with them. At that time, I just wanted to meet people and have fun. That was, that was one of my priorities at that time, right? So now my priority is a little different. I have, it's a realization I have a limited amount of resources, time, money, energy. And if you're serious about going on a trip, if you're serious about anything you want to do in your life, you're going to make the necessary changes in your life and the necessary sacrifices to make your dream or your goal come true. So whether that means you're going to cut back on some of the luxury things in your life, um, luxury doesn't mean Gucci bag all the time. It could even mean buying um, a delicious cupcake. You know, if you eat, if you drink coffee, Coffee is not a necessity. Some say like, oh, I need coffee to stay awake. But really like, you know, that's something that people can become dependent on, but it's not like a life or death thing that they need in their life. Like the air, you, we need to breathe. So that you cannot cut out of your life. You know, you need it all the time. That's a necessity. Food is a necessity, but caviar is not a necessity. Caviar is a luxury food like eat food but you don't want to cut back too much where you're like eating unhealthy food oh, i just hit my chopsticks again so i'm not saying you need to cut back on everything in your life but you just need to know what is the most important to you all right i'm gonna have a lotus when you are saving up for a trip you need to learn how to say no to things you need to know how to say no to people family or friends, say no to certain purchases. Saying no well and knowing when to say no 
it's a skill you have to keep practicing it to get better because no one likes to get rejected but if you know how to do it properly then less chance of uh, hurt feelings but some people even if you reject nicely they're gonna get hurt feelings um depends really depends on who you're talking to and of course another way to prepare for a trip is to make extra money take on extra gigs next question is what are some tips for planning and getting ready for travel like what to pack how soon to pay for a flight etc this question can be answered in even up to a 20 minute video there's a lot of details uh, on how to answer this question tips for planning don't over plan have some days where you know you're gonna go to this temple or like you're gonna go to this cultural site like don't over schedule don't be like i'm gonna go to three places tomorrow and then go here like five places the next day and then like i have everything set like it's like perfect puzzle don't make it like a tight puzzle make sure there's some loose parts you never know when you're traveling you never know who you're gonna meet you don't know what new friends you're gonna make on the way and you might want to you know join forces and do things together and have that flexibility let the adventure happen if you over plan and you stick to the schedule constantly I mean a lot of people they like to travel because of the adventure right sometimes it loses that adventure if you over plan and what happens when you over plan uh, it could be stressful because you're like oh I missed that bus now I'm gonna be like now I'm running behind schedule if you're on vacation versus if you're filming videos like me it's a different story um, actually sometimes I do book I schedule a lot of things in advance because I'm like I really want to film that but that restaurant might be closed on a Tuesday so I have to schedule that for Wednesday and then I don't want to film some place at a weekend it might get too crowded so depends on your purposes of travel so I'm I'm guessing the person who asked me this question is more like vacation more like adventure style so yeah do not over plan and sometimes we get sick and um, how terrible would it be if you plan everything, everything seemed perfect, and then you got sick in the middle of your trip? Then your whole plan changes. That's what happened to me in Cambodia. Uh, I was I bought three days, three day pass for Angkor Wat. I think it was a uh, 40, 60 bucks. I ended up going only half a day because I got really sick. I got dengue fever. Thankfully, didn't plan too much of Cambodia because at that point I already learned the lesson of do not over plan but even when I planned my Cambodia trip loosely uh, things didn't pan out the way I hoped and when you get sick and you're staying in the bed on vacation don't take it personally you're not the first and last person this has ever happened to before in the history of mankind come on billions of people on earth right a lot of people got sick on their vacation whether it was food poisoning or Dengue fever. Do you watch Korean drama? Hee <laughs> hee. Have fun in filming your mukbang. The thing about Korean dramas is once I start, I get addicted and I cannot stop watching. I binge watch if all the episodes are out and then I don't go to the gym. I just want to watch the Korean drama. So uh, lately, there's a lot of things I need to do, especially before I go to Korea. And I haven't been able to watch any Korean dramas. I have started to watch Sense8 on Netflix, uh, mainly because Tuna Pei is in there and she is this badass fighter. Um, but now, like, at first she was like the reason why I started watching it, but now it's like I watch it because of Sense8, because of all the other characters too. Anyhow, what's, what's a hot Korean drama these days? What is the most delicious meal you've had on your travels? Ooh, that's a tough one. I can't say there's like the ultimate meal that was the best. One of the things is your taste buds change over time. So there might have been one meal that was like amazing. The best meal I've had in my life at that moment. But years later, if I were to eat the same dish, it might not taste like the best dish in the world because maybe my mouth likes more saltier food or sweeter food or less. I really enjoyed eating chicken in Bali at the uh, Gian Yard Night Market. I made a vlog about that before. 
Um, there was this ancient style pancake I ate in Jakarta that was super delicious. Hands down, one of the most, maybe even the top five memorable things I ate. But a couple years ago, I had um, barbecue lamb in Singapore where you use like long forks and knives and you just like slice off the meat. I think that's also one of my favorite things I've had in my life. It's not just about the food. It's about the interaction with the food that you have to work. I'm gonna go a little bit faster so I could answer more of your questions. Um, what's your favorite food with tenjang? Tenjang jjigae. Mm mm. Bonus. What's the most funny, crazy thing that happened on camera but you had to edit out? There are so many times I caught people picking their nose <laughs> when I'm travel vlogging. Sometimes I take it out, other times I just keep it. <laughs> like, even like people picking their wedgie. I caught that on camera before. I'm going to Seoul, Hong Kong, and Taipei in June. Do you have any travel recommendation for me, like must-see places? I get these type of questions a lot. People asking me, what do you recommend? But it's really hard for me to answer that because I don't know you, like what your personal interests are. If you like food, I, I'm gonna give you a totally different type of recommendation. If you like landscapes, then it's a, another type, another list of different recommendations. So let me know like, is it food oriented? Are you like into nature? But uh, generally speaking, uh, if you're going to Seoul, I definitely recommend you going to Insadong. This is a place I mention often because they do have like those little tea houses and um, temple cuisine. I really enjoyed uh, Sanchon when I went there about two, three years ago. Make sure you bring an empty stomach. Be prepared to eat a lot. If you want to know more about what to eat and do and see in Seoul, you could check out my Sweet and Tasty TV YouTube channel. That one's dedicated to everything Korean. Taipei, make sure you check out some night markets, get some Taiwanese street food. You know, what I film on my YouTube channels versus what I personally like to do and see is quite different because what I like personally like to do and see, it's not going to necessarily be as popular for the YouTube creator to make money we need to think in terms of SEO and what are popular things. It's not just about like selling out, oh, you're selling out to become popular. I mean, we need to get some traffic. Any suggestions on how to plan for a trip without breaking the bank? If you have a very small budget, I would choose a country that is very affordable where the dollar goes a long way. Or wherever, whichever country you're from, where your currency goes a long way, go there. What is your favorite Korean movie? I really like zombies and post-apocalyptic films, so I really enjoyed Train to Busan. But I... Fast zombies? It doesn't make sense to me. One of my favorite Korean movies of all time is Oasis by Lee Chang Dong and Time by Kim Gi Dong. If you watch my videos for all these years, then you already know this. But for those who are joining me uh, recently, now you know. Oh, big bite! Oh. Oh wow. I got kimchi fingers now. What is a proper way to flirt? I'm not good at flirting, so I don't know how to answer that. I'm a natural flirt. Sometimes I don't realize I'm flirting. I might touch someone's shoulder, whether it's a guy or a girl. When I do it to a girlfriend, I touch their shoulder, they're not gonna think it's flirting. It's just a friendly thing, right? But when I touch, if I do the same thing to a guy, then they might think I'm flirting. Some people say that if you uh, touch your hair a lot, that's flirting. But for me, even when I'm in front of my mom, I touch my hair a lot. See, if I do this, right, it feels different on the top of my hair. See, maybe guys who've never had long hair won't understand this, but when I change the direction of my strands, it feels a little different up here. So sometimes I just like to change things up, you know, change the feels. So I just touch my hair like this. If you put your hair like this, it changes how you look on this angle and the other angle. So when you do that, while you're talking to someone, you're giving them different perspectives of you. But how to flirt? How do you guys flirt? Do you? Let's give our fellow viewers some tips and tricks. No, how did the fly get in my room? I had my door closed.
He thinks he's a ninja. He's being quiet now. He like flies a little bit and then hides. Flies a little bit and then hides. Where is it? I don't know about you guys, but when I hear the fly buzzing, sometimes it gives me goosebumps. I really don't like that sound. Does it give you goosebumps too? <sighs> Anyhow, life goes on. I really want to travel to Korea. What are some things I should explore other than K-pop? You know, there's this uh, great YouTube channel called Sweet and Tasty TV. That girl, she talks everything about Korea. Oh, that fly crawled under my door. I was using my t-shirt to like, you know, whiplash it. Best place to stay while visiting Korea other than Seoul? Busan. Well, if you go to Busan during the summertime, you should book in advance because it is a very popular place to be during the summer. Mwah. Um, I'm gonna have another bite. I'm getting quite full. And you know, I'm trying not to overeat. It's not healthy to overeat. So I'm gonna have some more lotus. That lotus is um very sweet. A little salty too, so just have some quinoa to balance that out. For my last piece of Sam, I am going to eat this thick piece of pork belly. Mmm. Mmm, that was a very silky bite. Do you think flies are smart? After I nearly hit that fly, it just got quiet. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's still alive. Maybe just like waiting for the right moment, which is kind of creeping me out right now. Ooh, let's eat some of the skin. I finished the lotus. So let's wrap it in a genyip. And put some quinoa on that. It might not look like I ate a lot, but I ate over half of the pork belly. It's pretty filling. I hope you guys enjoy eating some with me and learned a thing or two about travel. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram for delicious selfies and um, on my Snapchat for the latest updates. I'll see you guys in the next travel video and mukbang. Bye-bye!